Lots of people just don't care about the technical details of why it's better. From a consumer point of view, and if you're explaining this to management, it becomes very easy. Six is better than five. The signal stays within the cable. Now, if I bend it really badly, I can get some of the light to come out of the cable. That's not a good idea. Bending the cable does affect the transmission, especially on multi-mode fiber. The idea, however, here is the signal is contained within the cable. In the really old CCNA, they had Wi-Fi, then it was removed, but now it's back. So there are a lot of advantages to using Wi-Fi, but there are also disadvantages to using Wi-Fi. One of the big ones is security. I can use Kali Linux as an example with a Wi-Fi adapter, and I can listen in on your conversation. Wi-Fi is a hub. Now, a lot of people tell me, David, there's no point learning about hubs. But if you don't understand what a hub is, then you don't understand that Wi-Fi acts like a hub. In other words, we're using the same frequency in the air. If I listen in on the same frequency that you're transmitting at, I can hear your conversation. I'm walking here in the forest. Why does that matter? Well, the great thing is I can pull out my phone and I can still check my email if I want to. Now, for a lot of us, when we go out into nature, we don't want to have access to the internet. But I think for many of us, we still want to be connected. Now, the great thing about the Salia network is I can see how good my signal is by simply looking at my phone. It's just shifted, actually, from 3G to 4G. So I know that 4G is better than 3G because of the simple numbering convention used in Salia networks. I know that 5G is gonna be better than 4G, and 4G is better than 3G simply because of the numbers. So, really happy that I've walked up this hill a bit. I'm a bit out of breath, but my signal has improved from 3G to 4G, which is great. Internet connection is now better. But in Wi-Fi, we don't have that. Well, we didn't have that. We had weird numbers and names like 802.11b. In the past, from a non-technical user's point of view, there just didn't seem to be any logic. We have 802.11b, and then we go to A, and then suddenly we go to G, and then we go to N, and then we go to AC, and now AX. There's no logic in that. So, you know, which channels are used? Who cares about the channels? if you're a non-technical user. All you care about is speed and reliability. So which standard allows me to connect to the internet more quickly with less trouble and which one is quicker? All I care about is getting to Facebook as a user. I don't care about the underlying infrastructure. I mean, as an analogy, do you care how your electricity gets to your house? No, all you care about is that when you turn the lights on, they go on. So from a non-technical user's point of view, the same thing applies. They don't care if A is better than G, it's better than AC or whatever. They just want better throughput, better reliability. And I think the Wi-Fi Alliance has done something really good here. They've changed the naming convention used. They've changed the name. So rather than talking about AC or AX, from a layman's point of view or a non-technical user's point of view, we can now talk about Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 4. So N is Wi-Fi 4, not as good as AC, which is Wi-Fi 5, which is not good as AX, which is Wi-Fi 6. It's so much easier for a non-technical user to understand which Wi-Fi is better. Six is obviously better than five, which is obviously better than four. And guess what? Here I've got a 4G connection. I know, once again, that 4G is better than 3G, which is better than 2G. I don't have to understand the technical details of why it's better. I just know it's better because 4 is better than 3. And in the same way, I know, as a consumer or user, non-technical person, that Wi-Fi 6 is better than Wi-Fi 5, better than Wi-Fi 4. Lots of people just don't care about the technical details of why it's better. 
as a consumer, we just realize that if we get a 4G connection, the internet's going to be faster. So I'm going to be happier. Same is true now for Wi-Fi. If I get a Wi-Fi 6 router, I'm going to be a lot happier than someone who's got a Wi-Fi 3 router or Wi-Fi 4 router because it's going to be quicker. It's going to be better. It's going to be easier to connect. And all I care about is getting to Facebook, getting to Instagram, getting to certain websites as quickly as I can. I don't care about the technical details. So this rebranding exercise makes a lot of sense. It makes it a lot easier for vendors to brand their routers and their wireless devices so that users know which device is better. So makes a lot of sense. Wi-Fi is so important, I think, for many of us today. There's no question why we need to learn this. It's really good that Cisco have put it back into the CCNA. In the really old CCNA, they had Wi-Fi, then it was removed, but now it's back. Wi-Fi is really, really important in today's networks. Can you imagine life today without Wi-Fi or wireless connections? We today take it for granted that we're going to have Wi-Fi when we go to the office or a coffee shop, or even for a lot of us at home. When we book a hotel, we expect Wi-Fi connections. Okay, now there's obviously a big difference between Wi-Fi connections and cabled connections. In the bad old days, and I've got an old laptop here. In the bad old days, laptops such as these had ethernet connections built in. So I would be able to connect a ethernet cable directly to the laptop. But modern laptops don't have that. I mean, your laptop, maybe you've got a Mac or a PC, they typically don't have any connections for ethernet cables. They can only connect to the network or to the internet using Wi-Fi. If I wanted to add an ethernet connection to this laptop as an example, I have to plug in a USB ethernet adapter and then I can add this to a wired network. So for a lot of us today, a lot of devices only support Wi-Fi. A lot of devices today don't support wired connections. That's especially true, I think, with devices such as these, IoT devices. I mean, this is a hue bulb. It seems ridiculous, but in the past, I would have had to have used an Ethernet cable to get a device like this onto the network. I mean, that doesn't make any sense today. Devices are getting so small. I mean, it doesn't make sense to try and connect an Ethernet cable to a bulb. What about your phone? I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> having to connect an ethernet cable to a phone and then having to be connected to a physical network. So you can't walk around with your mobile device. The whole point about a mobile device is it's mobile. I can move this around and still be connected to the network without any problems. Now, that is a big difference between say a wired connection, which in this example is using fiber. Notice the difference here this fiber connection, and here's the light going through the fiber cable, is contained or constrained within this cable. So the signal stays within the cable. Now, if I bend it really badly, I can get some of the light to come out of the cable. That's not a good idea. Bending the cable does affect the transmission, especially on multi-mode fiber. The idea, however, here is the signal is contained within the cable. There are advantages, however, to using wired connections such as this compared to Wi-Fi. The first thing is typically you can go a lot further. So with light as an example, we can go a lot further. The cables under the sea are fiber cables. We can go much further in distance than we would with the Wi-Fi connections that we have in our homes or in companies. Now there is a difference between the signals used in a Wi-Fi network versus a cellular network. They use different frequencies. Governments around the world dictate which frequencies are available for which applications. So applications such as 3G, 4G, 5G use a certain range of frequencies. Wi-Fi uses a different range of frequencies and we'll talk more about those in a moment. We have two main bands that we need to know about and that's 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands. Typically, the lower the frequency, the further the transmission. 
but the lower the data rate or the throughput. Five gigahertz as an example can't go as far as 2.4 gigahertz. It also can be absorbed a lot more easily. So as an example, five gigahertz gets absorbed a lot more by a concrete wall or brick wall compared to 2.4 gigahertz. So if you want further distance or you wanna go through walls as an example, it's better in some cases to use 2.4 gigahertz than five gigahertz. But five gigahertz allows for higher throughput or more data transmission through the network. So there's always advantages and disadvantages to any technology that you use. Copper cables are generally a lot easier to work with than fiber cables. If a cable breaks, it's easier to repair that We're using copper than fiber, but fiber is more secure. So if you want more security, as an example, in a military environment, it's much harder to tap into a fiber connection than it is a copper connection. So you may want to use fiber rather than copper. Fiber can go longer distances than copper can. But in this part of the course, we are concentrating on Wi-Fi. And I'm going to talk about the different Wi-Fi standards. You need to know that for the exam. We're going to talk about the different frequencies. I've mentioned 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So those are the two ones that, that you need to remember. We're going to talk about channels. I'm also going to talk about some of the issues using Wi-Fi. You've probably experienced a lot of these already. So as an example, if you move to a certain part of a room or a building, you get a dead spot where you can't get a connection. You move a few meters or a few feet away, you get a better signal or better transmission. So there are a lot of advantages to using Wi-Fi, but there are also disadvantages to using Wi-Fi. One of the big ones is security. Wi-Fi is a hub. In other words, we are using the same frequency in the air. If I listen in on the same frequency that you're transmitting at, I can hear your conversation. I mean, we as humans can do that. You and I are speaking and listening on the same frequency ranges. Humans can hear at a certain frequency. Now, obviously, older people generally have worse hearing than younger people. Younger people can hear a wider range of frequencies than older people. But for the most part, we are listening on a certain band of frequencies. If you speak and I stand near you, I can hear you. Now, you may be talking to someone else, but if I stand near enough, I can hear your conversation. And the same is true in Wi-Fi. If you speak, depending on the antenna, you have what are called directional antennas that will send a signal only in, certain, in one direction. It's kind of like a torch. We take a beam and then we can direct the beam. So we're directing it in a certain direction. But an omnidirectional antenna, which is what a lot of organizations use, will send the signal in all directions. So you get different types of signals, different kinds of devices. A bridge, as an example, will push the signal in a certain direction. An omnidirectional or all direction antenna sends the signal everywhere. So if you speaking to that wireless access point and I'm in the vicinity, I'll be able to hear your transmission. So security is a big problem in Wi-Fi networks. In the past, we had mechanisms to encrypt data, but they were weak and they could be cracked. Today, we use better encryption and authentication methods. But once again, they can also be cracked if someone knows what they're doing and you're using a weak password. It's important to use strong passwords and strong authentication mechanisms, especially in corporate environments. Okay, so I've been talking now for a long time. I think it's time to jump into the details of Wi-Fi.